Hello and welcome to the API The Docs podcast. My name is Laura Vosch and this is once again an awards special episode, one of four, bringing you the recording of my conversation with the Dev Portal Awards jurors at the Awards Gala event last December. In this episode, I asked the awards jurors and Gentle, developer relations leader at Cisco DevNet, also author of the multiple times reprinted Docs Like Code book, Bob Watson, technical documentation consultant and just so you know, Bob will also be the instructor for the newly starting specialization in API documentation program at the University of Washington, and Michael Richardson, engineering manager at Kruger and also organizer of the Momentum Developer Conference. So I asked them on their latest impressions on API docs and developer portals just before we announced the overall best developer portal of the year 2023. In this episode, you will hear the emphasis on much better infrastructure for trying out APIs, better integration into authentication, and how important it is to incorporate user experience research and design in getting the end customer recognized as part of the design process of developer portals. And Bob and Michael also share some of what they wish to see portals deliver in the near future. You can find a summary article of the awards results on pronovix.com Look for Best Developer Portals 2023. With my deepest gratitude to the jurors and all people who are working on building excellent developer portals. Enjoy. Hi. Hello. Good Hello. to see you again. Good uh, and, thank, um, yes. and thank you for your trusting me to um, ask you questions that I'm not going to show you here. Of course, Laura. Always. Um, Michael is first time. A juror and and Bob have been uh, embracing the awards for years now. So we have a continuum of experiences here. Do you see certain aspects of developer portals? And I'm going to ask the same questions from from the three of you as from the previous gala from the previous years, so that if somebody would like to see how different people with different backgrounds, the different contexts see the same thing, then, then they get a richer picture. So um, do you see certain aspects of developer portals coming more into focus as opposed to a couple of years ago? And if I may, I'm going to ask Anne first. Alphabetical by first name. Why not? Sure. Uh, that's because yeah. I mean, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'd say if you look at a couple years, so I'm going to call a couple years to or so years ago, I think there's just better and better infrastructure for trying out APIs and better um, integrations into like authentication. So like with Spotify, with Miro, you could use your own account to try things out on the developer portal. Well, that's huge, all right? I had a song list in a couple clicks. It was amazing to see. Um, so I think there's there's just better and better experiences that way because um, you know, the, the backends have caught up and there's many more cloud services you can get access to. Um, and, and I just think, you know, even seeing, I, I believe it was, was it React that had a way where you didn't even have to log in and you could get things going. So that was really impressive as well. So I, I think that's the biggest thing in the last couple of years is just more push towards let them try it out, even if it's hard on the back end. Um, believe me, I know at Cisco, especially with our big portfolio of APIs, it's not easy to set up backend infrastructure and it's not easy to make sure everything's, you know, secure enough and, and taking into consideration any bad actors or, you know, you, you have to be very thoughtful and uh, very, you know, uh, just plan ahead and then maintain it over time and be ready to do that with the resources, you know. Um, how do you see this, Bob? You have been you have been uh, the patron saint of the Deaf World of Whites from the very beginning, and um, this is also very of mine. <laughs> what would we do without you? What have you seen uh, that that is is more in focus recently? So I think the thing that impressed me from the very beginning of the presentation is the incorporation of user experience, research and design. Uh, I think that's something near and dear to my heart. But the, it's getting more and more into the mainstream of developer portals. I mean, it was always something for websites, but 
by golly, developer portals turn out to be websites too, and they could benefit from all the same um, uh, user experience innovations. And so seeing that be applied to the um, the entries into the contest over or the competition year after year uh, warms my heart. <laughs> but it's that, that it's getting that recognition and to see that become more and more mainstream as opposed to, you know, something they'll get to later or something that doesn't even enter into the conversation is something I've seen and something I hope to continue to see become more mainstream, getting the customer, you know, recognized as part of the design process of the de developer portals. Last year, Matt, you said something like this too, like, Oh my God! You did not invent people again. And actually, there's people using. <laughs> like, like I said, that's near and dear to my heart. So the more I see it, the the, the just the happier I get. Thank you, Michael. Um, you're new to the awards as a juror, but not new to developer portals. Um, and you're also part of building the Kruger developer portal. Um, what do you think is more in focus or more raised at the bar than before? I think. I do defer to some extent to the the others in the group who have more experience with this judging process, but uh, I have to uh, agree with both of them and, and specifically calling out the sandbox, the ability to interact with an API of any kind um, directly in the documentation is so valuable and really contributes to that learning experience. So I uh, think there's a lot of value there. And, Look forward to continuing to see more of that uh, as time goes on. It's becoming more of a sandbox in its original meaning, like you kind of can play there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. My favorite question, let me turn this around. Um, what would you like to not see in, in portals anymore? And Michael, since you, you had the mic. that Wow, that's, um, you know, I think some companies, confusion about their users and they may end up with salesy material in a developer focused portal and i think that it's really valuable when building these kind of portals to consider your users and the kind of information that they're going to need uh, based on their use case so yes there is absolutely a place for selling your product and, and getting people on board. But, uh, you know, de developers and inside the developer portal, you're typically looking to get stuff done and try things out. So keeping a focus on that. And what do you think? Yeah, I can go next. Uh, you saw me come off mute like, oh, I like this one too. <laughs> I would love to leave behind this stark difference between the reference information and the how-to and conceptual information where design-wise, it just looks totally different. Now, the entries this year are amazing and have done, the ones that can do that really well are gonna stand out where um, they thought about the journey, um, they thought about user goals. So I, I think it really ties into what Michael's saying, but at the same time, the thing I don't wanna see is, you know, here's Swagger UI, here's everything else, right? And I think, you know, the, the times of that are over. And I think even vendors are starting, you know, to realize the layouts matter and the, the journeys and navigations matter. Um, of course, search matters too, and you might pop in anywhere, but you don't want this, uh, you know, whiplash effect of this is very different, you know, um, where am I? Yeah. Bob, what doesn't cause joy to people on portals? Well, I, uh, I, just to kind of uh, get up where Michael and Ann left off, the the thing that I, I haven't liked to see in the past is the sort of cargo culting of, oh, they did it and they got a prize, so we'll copy their design. It's like, it's not the design you want to copy. It's the process that they went through to get to design. And that's like what Michael say, in touch with the customers, being able to use it, keeping the design coherent. Um, it's It's the process of knowing your users to know what they want because your users are different from whatever company you want to emulate because they got the prize last year. Um, know the process that they took to understand their users and how that 
how they design their site to meet their users' needs, and then design your site to meet your users' needs. Um, that's that's the, the 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 sites who did that in this year's competition, unfortunately, made it hard to judge because they were all really good. That was the problem we had. Is like, okay, well, how do we pick from the best and the best when they're like literally neck and neck? So it's great to see more companies. Uh, organizations adopting, you know, a good process that gives them good results. So if 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 there's anything to take away, it's that that people focus on the process. You know, as as the, uh, the speakers at the very beginning talked about. I mean, I don't know if they. The, I think all of us here realize it, but you know, that's literal goldmine uh, of information for uh, for the secret to winning next year's competition. So I'm, I'm asking you both first now, was there like a surprising approach that you really didn't expect in either way? Like, huh, that's new. I'll put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> surprising approach. I think that I, I'm going to sound like a broken record at this point, but I think the surprising thing was to see the approach to a successful, the, to a successful site repeated so frequently because before it was the exception and it was easy to pick out the winners. It's like, oh, they've got it figured out. Everyone else is still catching up, you know, winner without a doubt. Now it's like, ooh, these all have figured it out. Uh, like the the Miro site, how their whole onboarding experience, that was one of my favorite ones, uh, just reflected the company. It made it fun. It drew you in. It showed you its capabilities. And it's like, they get it. They know who they're talking to and they know how to talk to them. Um, and so seeing more of that, um, and, and that, that that's, that's becoming the norm now, uh, I think is what surprised me. It's like, it, it's good to see that people are listening and picking it up, picking up. So, so these, these, these competitions, I think are starting to pay off. Um, we're, they're, they're literally raising the bar of, of you know what's uh, what's expected, and like I said in your presentation at the beginning, is giving away the secret to do that. And so uh, I'm hoping to have an even harder time next time and pick it a winner. When we started the award, it was actually Christoph's dreams. This is the first award uh, gala where Christoph Vatoma isn't here. Um, he's my co-founder in husband, but that's another story. But it was his big dream that sounded impossible when we started this award. And um, I remember some frustration from you, Bubble. So like, um, this could be done better. <laughs> and, and apparently um, the, the promise with which we lured you in as a, as a juror that we are going to collectively raise the bar and excellence on portals, it's, it's hopefully coming. And I hope that we made some contribution to that. Michael. Was there something that you were really surprised by when you saw the, the nominees? Um, there was some gamification, which I thought was a, a nice little addition, which I didn't really expect. Uh, and I don't think that's been, I think people have tried that over the years and, and we're, we're starting to see that come into its own. And I'm excited to see where that leads over time. And? I remember two uh, sort of, wow, they did that moments. Um, one was Ring Central. We were evaluating them for the community outreach and they have an award system. So it's in line with that gamification where uh, you could gain points and then um, pick your own prize. So I love it for just the playfulness of it. Um, you could win a panda, <laughs> a plush panda. So it was like Dave and Buster's in the United States where you get tickets and then you go pick out something on the, you know, rewards board, right? So um, I really liked that. That one was one of those moments where I went, oh, wow, I never would have thought that there's a system that could do that now. So that was really fun. Um, I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I was a little bit surprised when teams um, could mention that, oh, and we've run accessibility testing on our site. So what a testament to the more attention we can get on that, um, you know, not just for risk mitigation, but to actually make a better, uh, more accessible site for all. 
um, you know, it's, uh, accessibility is, is near and dear to me uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I was uh, accidentally blinded in one eye for many months through just a random thing that happened. So uh, not that I ever got good with screen readers, that was really difficult, but it could happen to anybody. Um, so I, I think that by making it better for a part of the population, we're making it better for all of us, right? So that was a that was a delight. That was great to see um, people just noting, oh, you know, we've, we've, we've run accessibility tests. If you would take out your crystal ball and and I know I'm really shocked you <laughs> with this question last year, but I love the answer, so let me ask this again. If you took out the crystal ball and um, try not to look only at AI, what would you think seeing in the future of that portals? Well, mine's AI, so no. <laughs> yeah, no. But I do have one that's, that's related, um, but it's more about, and I don't think it's science fiction, I think it's science reality. Um, if you're going to make a large language model and use it in your, you know, make your documentation, your model, um, wouldn't it be great if you had already run all of that content through a, a linter or an Acrolynx, you know, content governance system, or even just Grammarly, um, you know, and I think that the, the key why this won't be science fiction any longer is, well, first of all, generative AI is amazing. Um, but second of all, using your own LLM and then having confidence that the data is good, that you're not putting garbage in, um, that's where we can, we know these things by heart. It's like ingrained in us that if it's not any good to start with, you need to get it to a good place, right? So I, I think Acrolinks has an API, Grammarly has an API. So it's on developers to make sure those integrations can, can be smooth and high quality. So I, that's what I would love to see. That's that's the kind of thing that's, it is just around the corner, folks. Uh, we we can do this. Thank you. And Michael, what is in, what, what do you see in your crystal ball? I think that developer portals are becoming more varied and trying new things. So I, I see a lot of experimentation and creativity coming in the future with, various companies trying to create differentiation and using those user experiences to uh, say, well, what if it doesn't have to look the way it's always looked? How can we completely reimagine the way that we are creating developer experience? So in truth, I, that means I don't know, but I'm excited to see stuff that looks very original. Um, if I can... I think one that I remember seeing that was very original to me was instead of using git put post delete, just using the first two letters in the table of contents. So it was D E P U P O blew my mind. I had never even thought to do that. And it looked like it, I, I love chemistry and I think the table of contents is really, or the table periodic table is really interesting. So it looked like periodic table style, uh, very science driven. I, I just, that was interesting. Like, who thought of that? I want to know you. So, Michael, if you're going to be a returning juror, uh, be careful what you wish for, because you might have to compare some very original science next year. Excellent. Um, this is going to be interesting to see new things. Um, mm -hmm. Bob, let me ask you to, to round up our interview. What do you think may happen to Dev Portals in the future? And what do you wish would happen to Dev Portals in the future? Uh, well, I hope we see more of them. I think that that's that's exposing that that's acknowledging API as a product and and treating it as such and and I think everyone benefits from that. The the one thing that I'd like to see them incorporate, and this kind of speaks to what Anne and Richard were talking or Michael was talking about, was the um, getting feedback back to the writers and developers. Right now, it's the 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 getting data back from how people are using it and how you know what they're looking for and you know what what helps them. And, you know the the level of data that you can collect from a developer portal is still, I'd say, an untapped uh, goldmine of information. 
and being able to collect that information and, and present that in usable formats um, is an opportunity that then will help, you know, uh, support the ideas of, you know, getting the AI to do the right thing. You need feedback for that and getting the design. If you're going to try out a design idea, you need feedback from that. The better feedback, the sooner, the more you can iterate on your design, the more you can improve it. And so I think we still haven't crossed that, that last bridge to tie this all together and, and you know, and, uh, you know, taking them to the next level. It's it's going to be exciting to see where that next level is. Like like Michael was saying, you know, I I don't know what that looks like either, and I've been studying this for 20 years. But I know that once we get all the right pieces in place, you know, amazing things are going to happen. So I'm I'm still on the literally on the edge of my seat, watching how that's going to turn out. Thank you very very much uh, for this interview and for sharing your opinions. I recently had the experience to be on the other side of the microphone, and now I know not just know, but I felt it. What a vulnerable position this is to be in, and how brave you got to be to actually share the more extreme ideas and crystal balling into the future. So I, I very, very much thank you for bringing all your experience, knowledge, and, and, and energy into this program. Thank and you, Laura. It's been an honor, and you've been a great host and leader the whole time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the API The Docs podcast. We thank our colleagues at Pronovis Developer Portals for letting us work on this and the entire API community for all of the mutual support and sharing of experiences that you give each other. Do you have a topic or guest that you would like us to spotlight? Drop a note at podcast at pronovix.com. If you go to the website, api.docs.org, you can find the recaps and recordings of past API Docs conferences, as well as the upcoming program. Until next time, be well. <laughs>